Well, good morning and welcome to today's episode of The Word. I'm glad that you are with me today. Hey, we are going to be tackling a well-known Bible passage from the prophet Isaiah. We're going to be talking about the topic of being sent by the Trinity. That's right, because today also is Trinity Sunday, the day we celebrate that there is one and only God. And in one and only God, there is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. More on that in just a moment, but I'm glad that you're with us here today. In today's episode of The Word, we will be right back. So today, well, happy Trinity Sunday today. Uh, It is a great day, like I mentioned in the introduction. Today is the celebration of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons of God, yet only one singular God. How does this work? I don't know. I just trust the Bible. I just trust God, and we'll go from there. But we are sent by Him, the Trinity, we're sent by God. We are sent by God into the world. We are sent by God to proclaim a message. Today, we're not going to talk about the message itself. We're just going to talk about being sent. And we're going to be looking at Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. So grab your Bible, whether it's electronic or a paper version. Grab your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, and we'll be ready with you again on the flip side. So, are we ready for Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8? Excellent. Let's flip here and go. In in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Well, here am I, send me. And it's a great and wonderful phrase that Isaiah says. Now, there are several things I want to point out to us, uh, to you, from our text today. One, God was in his house. God was in the house. He was sitting on a throne. Isaiah saw this vision of God sitting on a throne, sitting in his house, sitting in his temple. The the presence of God just filled, filled the house. The presence of the God filled, filled the house. And there were his messengers, his specific angels called seraphim. Now, seraphim, as Isaiah wondrously describes, two wings covering their their face, two wings covering their feet, and two wings causing them to fly. Now, 
I'm not going to get into angelology or I'm not going to talk about all the different types of angels. That would make this video way too long and that's a whole other topic. But here are the seraphim. They are flying in the presence of God and they are proclaiming their job. They were telling, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, heaven and earth. You get it. It's, it's his life, his grace is filling the presence of God. The presence of God is filling it. Well, there can't be a wonderful story without a revelation. The revelation was to Isaiah, oh my goodness, oh my, I am doomed. I am doomed. He's in the presence of God. For sure he can't be doomed. Ah, but yes, he was. In his mind, he was doomed. Why would he say that he was doomed? I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people with unclean lips. The whole context is unclean, sinners, sinful, uh, disconnected from God, speaking badly, using the context of lips. And here is, he, he, he deserves death. He's seen the presence of God. He's seen God with his own eyes, and everybody who sees God with their own eyes dies. Oh, I'm doomed. I am doomed. Then one of the seraphim goes and grabs from the fire. There's a perpetual fire within the temple for the fact of the sacrifices. He goes and he reaches with the tongues, grabs a coal, and he's carrying it to Isaiah, and he's going to bring it to Isaiah's lips. And Isaiah's looking at this, and his eyes are probably getting wide and wide as the seraphim brings the tongues right to his lips and touches his lips with the coal. Now, did Isaiah's lips get burnt? doesn't say. But what it does say, you can no longer call yourself of a man of unclean lips. The fire of God, the fire that is used in the sacrifices, the fire that was used to, to atone for people's sins has burned your sin away. You are no longer a man with unclean lips. Your sins were paid for. They were atoned the atoning sacrifice, gone. Sayonara sins. So, now we have this man sinless in the presence of God. He can be in the presence of God so that he can now answer God's question. What was God's question? Who will go out for us? Now, some people would argue, well, that's just the royal plural. You know, for example, Queen Victoria used the royal, pur royal plural to say, who will go for us? And I mean, the royal of majesty. Well, in part, that's one usage. But I think which is more accurately and biblically based, who will go for us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who will go for us? Yes, who will go for us and who will take this message? Now, Isaiah, man who has been cleansed from his sins, who is now a freed man from because of God, says, I'll raise my hand. Probably don't have to because God knew what the answer was going to be anyway. But the answer was, here am I. I'm right here, God. Send me. Send me. And from that moment on, Isaiah's life was radically changed. His focus is now full-time proclaimer of God's word. What does God want to say to us? Well, we'll leave that one for another lesson. We know what the message was. And if you want to read past our past our, our last verse, please do so on your own. If you have any questions about what what did God say the message was, please comment below. Let me know, and we'll, we'll talk about it. But for today, 
It's all about being sent out. Now, we could say, we could say, as Isaiah did, woe is me. I am, I am a person. I am a man. I am a woman of unclean lips. I am a sinner. I don't even deserve to be in the presence of God. And at the same time, God has atoned for your sin not with a burning coal from the, offer, from the altar of burnt offerings, but from the holy precious blood of the second person of God. You, you are atoned. You are forgiven. You are renewed. You are a new person. So am I. So that qualifies us to go. Who will go for me? And that's when we raise our hands before God in a figurative sort of way, maybe not literally, but in a figurative way, we say, here am I, send me. Now, what does God want us to do? That's for another lesson also. But for now, remember and connect to the reality, the reality as a forgiven person of God by the blood of Jesus Christ, your sins are atoned for. You can ask, say to God, I'll go. I'll do it. Not out of compulsion. Not out of have-tos. No, God. I want to. More on that in today's message. Um, during our time of worship. We'd love to see you in-house uh, 10.30 this morning. Um, this is the Memorial Day weekend, so there will be a prayer for those who have gone before us, uh, done their wonderful duty for the sake of God and country. Uh, and so it is a great opportunity for us to be engaged in prayer. So join us, please. Uh, if you're unable to join us, please join us on live stream. Let us know uh, that, that you're worshiping with us and say hey in the comment section. Okay. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for going and saying to God, I'm here. Send me. We'll talk to you later.